Hey, everybody. My name is Jacob Bogey, and I'm here to introduce you to modernizing your data infrastructure with Confluent and Microsoft Azure. I'm a cloud platform solution architect at Confluent, and I'm joined today by Pavan Lakala, who is a senior product manager with Microsoft. Pavan. Thanks, Jacob. Let's get started, folks. Modern life is absent. Businesses are reliant on applications, and increasingly so are our homes and personal lives. For businesses, innovation is brought to life through apps as we find new ways to remain competitive and ensure business continuity during uncertain times. This means that application developers need to leverage data in new ways. As apps have become critical to both work and home, so too has data. Apps exist to use and move data. Without it, apps offer little functionality and usefulness. And as Pavan mentioned, data is really integral to how applications are built, used, and how we interact with them on a regular basis. Whether that be getting telemetry from devices, vehicles, or even things like seeing people working with tablets more often and collecting data right on site where they're receiving it from. The data that we get is really affecting how we make decisions and what we're going to do based upon the data that we're receiving. And customers and our, our users are really used to data-enriched experiences. So whether that be recommendations being given to you based upon things that you've seen or getting the ability to have an experience custom tailored to you based on who you are and what you've done, it's all data. And that data is powering how we change and run our businesses whether that be interactions with real-time backend systems or the ability for us to actually streamline and produce better analytics based upon the data that we're receiving in real time. That's really why companies are moving towards cloud-based systems. And getting data from the cloud is faster, easier, and cheaper than it's ever been before. And one of the things that we'd like to do today is give you, an, give you an idea of why Confluent and Azure are working together to provide real-time data infrastructure in a paradigm known as data in motion to our customers. So let's take a look at what it means to have a data platform providing you data in motion. So streaming data is really a requirement now to be competitive. And for a modern database infrastructure and for a modern database uh, platform, you need to be able to receive data in real time from all of your endpoints, whether that be a sale occurring or a shipment happening or a customer doing something on your website or in a system that they're interacting with. You need to be able to tailor that data and receive insight from that data to drive those customer experiences and those backend operations. We've seen it from many industries that we've worked in. So Citibank specifically said, we need to be able to shift the way that we think from everything at rest to everything in motion. And we'll talk about that today. We'll talk about the paradigm shift from transactional stale data at rest to fast data in motion, being used, being manipulated, being analyzed, and being leveraged to make real-time decisions. It's no wonder that 70% of Fortune 100 companies are using Apache Kafka, which is driving that data in motion paradigm. When we think about how customers are growing and changing on a day-to-day -day basis, it's by leveraging Kafka and its ability for you to produce and consume data in real time and to be able to manipulate that data in order for you to gain insight faster. At Confluent, we're proud to offer Confluent Cloud which is Apache Kafka that has been re-architected to run on Microsoft Azure. I like to talk about building with Kafka, connecting with Kafka, and integrating with Kafka. So when we think about building with Kafka, it's all about being able to scale what you're doing with that data, process it faster, realize insight from that data quicker, and be able to reduce what you're spending on those data insight moments and make it better for you to be able to get it quicker and easier. So we've got the ability for our customers to build with multiple different languages. So if they wanna build consumers to consume that data or producers to produce that data, they can choose based upon whatever language that they're currently developing with. 
And when we talk about connecting Confluent Cloud and Kafka, what we've done is we've improved upon the Connect API and the ability for customers to ingest existing connectors that we've built. And we can give you the ability to link your clusters together, offer infinite data retention, and really inc increase your price to performance ratio when using Confluent Cloud. And when we look at integrating, we've got the ability for you to be able to consume Confluent directly from the Azure Marketplace on flexible payment terms and with a single sign-on experience. Really, we'll talk more about what we've done with this partnership and show you some of the great reasons why Microsoft and Confluent are working together to provide that data in motion journey to you. Confluent is deeply integrated and trusted by Microsoft Azure. Whether that be the number of services that we're connecting into or the unified experience that we provide to our customers or that deep relationship. In fact, we announced our strategic partnership with Microsoft back in 2021. And most recently, we've actually expanded upon that partnership in April of this year to provide even better experiences for our customers running Confluent on Azure. And we are a Microsoft preferred solution. So Confluent Cloud has been validated by Microsoft experts to provide technological transformation and security for their data in motion journey. And like I'd mentioned before, you can transact against uh, the Azure Marketplace to purchase Confluent Cloud. You can use the unified billing experience that the Marketplace provides you, and you can burn down your MAC agreement or leverage some of that spend that you've already made to purchase and run Confluent Cloud. And when we talk about the connectors and that rich experience that we've built with Microsoft, it's all about being able to connect up to services like Azure Cosmos DB, which we'll talk about today, or Azure Synapse, or even Azure Blob Store. And when things get really interesting is when you start to build and enrich that data on a regular basis and use things like Azure Functions to trigger new application-based insights off of the data that you're receiving in real time. So Confluent Cloud, we like to call it cloud native, complete, and everywhere. It is Apache Kafka that's been re-architected to run optimized on Microsoft Azure and in a way that's scalable. So think linking clusters across regions and having a global central nervous system of data in a truly scalable fashion that makes the platform truly cloud native and complete. We'll talk in a moment about how we've taken Apache Kafka and extended it beyond just being Kafka into now having rich role-based access controls, ease of management, ease of protection of your data, cluster linking and replication across regions. And it's everywhere, whether it be building out that global central nervous system on Azure or being able to deploy Confluent directly to smaller based systems at the edge, think of an IoT based deployment, or if you want to run it on premise, you can do so as well. Confluent truly completes Apache Kafka. So if we look and think of Kafka as being that baseline blue bar, we've taken and we've extended the abilities of Kafka up and beyond so that you can think of ways that you can develop better against it, run and operate against it, and use it to truly redefine what you're doing with a data in motion platform as a business. And if we look below the bar, we've got the ability for you to be able to consume and get up and running faster and easier with our services, our training, and our expertise. So if I was a developer and I wanted to build against Kafka, I would want to have a rich ecosystem of languages that I could use to build and create my interfaces with that, that data in motion platform. I've also got the ability to use something like KSQL DB, which gives me the ability to actually adjust, manipulate, and learn from data in real time in a simple transactional SQL-based language directly on the cluster. And as an operator, I would wanna be able to manage, monitor, and gain insight on the health and heuristics of my platform all which I can do presented through a metrics API from Confluent, a rich user interface, which we'll see sh soon in a demo, and the ability for me to be able to scale up the cluster as needed and choose different types of storage to retain the data 
when I need to retain it. As an architect or an executive, I would want to know that I've got compatibility across different applications for my data schema. I would want to know that I've got a rich uh, security framework for governance and roles. And not only that, but true global resiliency so that I can reduce the risk that I've got and build in a way of being able to deliver this platform globally and potentially reduce my cost of ownership for a platform like Kafka. If I were to look at kind of a architecture view of what's possible with Confluent and what's possible with the platform and Confluent Cloud, we could look to the left and see that we've got a bunch of existing data sources or existing systems that I can unlock value from by leveraging open source Kafka as an interface to them or on-premise Confluent platform to truly interact with those systems in a supported way that Confluent provides. And when things get really interesting is when we take those on-premise systems and we link them up to Confluent Cloud, or we give Confluent Cloud the ability to reach down on-premise and connect to those systems itself, that's when we start getting that data out of those slow, at-rest transactional systems and into a modern data infrastructure like Confluent Cloud, where that data is now in motion and I can work with that data while it's in motion. So think about the ability for me to gain insight from that data through KSQL while it's in motion coming from those systems. And where our partnership with Microsoft has really gotten mature is how we link into those Azure first party services like Databricks and Synapse and Power BI. And most importantly, what we'll talk about today and what we'll demo today is connecting Confluent Cloud up to Azure Cosmos DB so that you can truly understand what it's like to take data from an existing data source, enrich it while it's in motion, deliver it to Confluent Cloud and gain insight from that data and then be able to deliver that insightful data down to Azure Cosmos DB to truly modernize what would be considered a new database modernized infrastructure. So let's talk about data platform modernization. It's not just about moving your databases to the cloud. I mean, it's really not that simple. If we think about migrating databases to the cloud, it's not easy. You've got a high cost. First, you're gonna be running that data in two separate places. And that cost might be prohibitive of you being able to truly get value from that data quickly and easily. Not only that, but you're gonna have slow time to analytical value. And what does that mean? To me, that means I'm now gonna have to reconcile two different data sources to potentially receive insight that I need to answer one query. And that can be a problem, especially when we've got teams or even uh, a challenge of not understanding how to run in a true hybrid or multi-cloud model. So picking databases up and moving them and running in a kind of a split brain method is challenging. So let's see what good looks like when we introduce Confluent Cloud to be able to help you modernize a database infrastructure, gain insight from that data faster and easier, and do it in a way that you can start leveraging the best of Microsoft Azure Cosmos DB and potentially lower your TCO and your ROI on running a modern database infrastructure. So let's dive into what that looks like. So first and foremost, when you introduce Confluent Cloud and the power that Confluent provides to you, you've got the ability of leveraging KSQL DB and stream processing to gain insight from that data while it's in motion being delivered into your platform. This gives you the ability to truly power those new apps and experiences that we talked about at the beginning. We want you to be able to start understanding that this data in motion now provides you the ability to create applications in motion and create experiences for your users that are tailored to them or experiences and insight that's tailored to your business based upon how you're getting that insight faster. Not only that, but you can get more from the platform by breaking down those data silos of those individual at rest components and those transactional systems now feeding into a central nervous system of data that is constantly moving and constantly being able to be analyzed, transacted and transformed against.
So Pavan, I've talked quite a bit about why customers would want to set data in motion and how to modernize a database infrastructure. And Azure Cosmos DB is one of those key pieces to that modernization. Can you give us a little bit of uh, idea of why a customer would want to choose Azure Cosmos DB as part of that modernization strategy? Yeah, Azure Cosmos DB is a cost-effective and scalable cloud NoSQL database. If you look at uh, the Cosmos DB, right, uh, there are four key pillars uh, in terms of the value prop that a customer gets. One is it kind of simplifies your application development and it is fully managed and cost effective. And the third pillar is uh, it's business critical ready. And the fourth being at any scale, the SLAs and all of that are guaranteed. Let's jump into each of those pillars and get into uh, various details of the Cosmos DB. Let's talk about uh, the simplification of app development. If you remember in the starting of the session, we discussed about how app development is entering the lives and lives of us both in the office and home environment. With Cosmos DB, uh, you'll be able to build cloud native apps with flexibility and speed by integrating with uh, Azure Synapse Analytics, Azure Kubernetes, Azure Functions. Uh, all these function, all these uh, services offered by Azure can be easily integrated with Cosmos DB. And in addition to that, you could use the language of your choice of with SDKs uh, for .NET, Java, Node.js, and Python. And in a, after you develop it, right, the indexing of your data gets done regardless of your data model. The second pillar that we talked about is it is fully managed and cost efficient. It automatically, the Cosmos DB, Azure Cosmos DB, automatically handles all the database management, maintenance, and updates. That takes lot of pain away from all the administrators that we have that are maintaining on-premise databases and all that. And then Autoscale guarantees high performance cost control for unpredictable traffic patterns and by matching resources to demand. And it eliminates capacity management and over provisioning. And this provides a cost-effective serverless model and keeps cost low as apps grow and ideal for spiky workloads, which is common. Uh, no, it's very common nowadays. Let's talk about uh, the business critical aspect of uh, Cosmos DB. Cosmos DB talks of nine, triple, uh, five desert, uh, 99.999% availability, which is very good. And then there is a continuous backup and point in time restore mitigates, uh, which kind of mitigates any accidental data losses. And then you have zero downtime with zero RPO. And then turnkey multiple multi region writes are enabled by the click of a button. And then there is enterprise gate, end to end encryption, and self self managed keys. And in terms of uh, authentication and authorization, there is role based access control, keeping your data safe, and offers fine tuned control. Finally, let's talk about speed at any scale. As as we saw in the interaction, right? As uh, the demand uh, the demand for the digital services has grown phenomenally during the COVID and all of it. So, what? The Azure Cosmos TV provides this real-time data access within less than 10, uh, 10 milliseconds, read and write latencies backed by SLAs. And then, as mentioned earlier, right, uh, it's like a 99.999% availability, availability. And then it has uh, multi-region writes and data distribution to any Azure region is enabled by a click of butter. And as I said, finally, it independently and elastically scales storage and throughput across any Azure region. That's about Cosmos TV. Jacob, take it over and talk about, uh, get into the demo. Awesome. Thank you, Pavan. So we're everywhere. Confluent Cloud, Confluent On-Premise, Confluent in Containers, Confluent in IoT Devices. We give you the flexibility to choose whether or not you want a fully managed SaaS cloud-based offering in Confluent Cloud, or the ability to deliver Confluent Platform a true enterprise supported distribution of Apache Kafka on many different types of substrates. So let's look at the two of them real quick and compare and contrast. Fully managed service, SaaS based model, Kafka engineered for the cloud, run by the, the experts at Confluent, available on the leading public clouds, or a self managed supported option of Confluent, known as Confluent Platform, which gives you the ability to 
consume it in a way to run either containerized, bare metal, or even on small devices like Raspberry Pi systems. If there's a container orchestrator out there, you can run Confluent Platform. We're really focused on helping you understand why Confluent Cloud and the power that we've got with the partnership with Microsoft is very effective. So let's think about that for a second. When we talk about unlocking data from disparate systems or existing infrastructure that you might have that you want to unlock more data value from by getting it in motion and getting it using something like Confluent Cloud. So we've got a very rich connector ecosystem. And those connectors, most of them are supported and managed by Confluent, available in Confluent Cloud. Or if you're using platform, you can use the same connectors as well. Uh, you've got the ability to connect up to those existing systems. So think uh, any system you might have, a SaaS-based system, an existing database system, some great examples here around some other ISV solutions that you might already have an investment in that you want to be able to get data from and get it in motion. Well, we verified these connectors. You can run the connectors yourselves in your Confluent platform environment or use Confluent Cloud where we'll manage those connectors, we'll lifecycle those connectors, and we'll make sure that everything runs well and in a way that make sure that you're successful with your data in motion journey. So we've talked quite a bit about what it looks like to modernize a database infrastructure with Confluent and Microsoft. Let's show you what it looks like to modernize a database infrastructure with Confluent and Microsoft. So we're gonna dive into a demo now. We'll give you a idea of what it's like to take existing data from transactional systems, bring it into Confluent Cloud, enrich that data, and then deliver it out to Cosmos DB after we've gained some insight from it for further processing and analytics. So stand by and I hope you enjoy the demo. Okay, so for this demo, we're going to be showing how we're gonna take existing data from two disparate data sources, one of them user information stored in a database and another one page view data that's consistently being uh, gleaned from an e-commerce website. And what we've been asked to do is actually enrich these two uh, data sets together inside of Confluent Cloud running on Microsoft Azure and produce some outputs using Case SQL. So we've been asked specifically to take that page view data or clickstream data and merge it together with user data so that we can find uh, specifically women that are uh, viewing pages. Not only that, but kind of get an aggregate of page views by region. And then also find uh, women in certain regions that are accomplished readers based upon the amount of page views they have. And we're gonna do that all inside of KSQL DB on Confluent Cloud. And then I'm gonna show you how we can take that, those resulting data sets and sync them out to Azure Cosmos DB, where the team that has made this request would actually like to run some further analytics on the data sets that we're providing to them. So let's begin. I've already logged us into Confluent Cloud, and here we can see the welcome screen. This is where we'll be able to choose which environment we'll be working with. So I've already got us an environment provisioned for this demo. And inside of here, you'll see that we've got a cluster up and running. It's already got some data that's flowing through it. And let's take a, look, a further look. So here's the initial overview into what's running in the cluster. We can kind of see some metrics here showing throughput and storage. But let me kind of walk you back through that use case again. So using stream lineage, part of Confluent Cloud, we can see that we've got a page view and a set of user data that we've turned into individual topics inside of the platform. And what we've done to kind of pre-prep this demo is we've created a SQL query in KSQL DB that is going to merge those together and give us all of the records that are page views by women and deliver them to a new topic. 
We've then also done a little bit more prep and we've created uh, page views by region. So this is all females uh, that are viewing certain pages and uh, by the region. We've also got another that is specifically aggregating out uh, women that are in a specific region. And then we've got our accomplished female readers down here at the bottom. And what we're doing with each of these is we're taking this uh, enriched data that we got from those two original sources, we're applying new queries, and we're delivering those to new topics on their own. So let's take a little bit deeper of a dive into what makes up a topic and show you some more. So here's a view into the topics that are running on the cluster. And we've got two types of topics. We've got raw topics and we've got curated topics. So the raw topics we'd be talking about would be page views or the data that's coming from that original data connection that we've got. And users is another example of a raw topic. And then curated topics are topics that we've created uh, through enrichment or through some other form of uh, manipulation or discovery using either uh, KSQL or uh, Kafka streams. So we actually do have an accomplished female readers topic here. And we can see that there's actually data being produced uh, from this topic. We can actually click into here and see the messages that are being created by this topic or into this topic. And we see messages are, are being produced. So our data sets are producing data. Our KSQL queries are actually enriching that data and they're being delivered into a new topic. As part of the Confluent Cloud solution, we also have the schema registry. And this allows for us to uh, validate that we're actually getting good data or quality data into the topic and into the cluster uh, versus junk data. So this allows us to actually create a strict schema that any messages coming into the platform have to conform to. And a fantastic part about the schema registry is we can actually have backwards compatibility. So the schema can evolve for new applications while still being able to service uh, older consumers uh, of those topics. And basically, this allows you to evolve your schema and evolve your applications in life cycles independent of one another. And a great piece, too, is we also have the ability to have versioning of those schemas as well. So we've talked a little bit about what the demo is going to comprise of, a couple of basic uh, bits of functionality inside of Confluent Cloud. Now let's actually talk about how we're going to take that data that was created for the accomplished female readers and get it out to Azure Cosmos DB for our analytics team to actually start working with that data. So we'll come here to data integration for this cluster and we can see that we've got producers and consumers. So producers are things that are creating data for the cluster to, to receive and consumers are uh, applications or processes that we've got that are going to be consuming data from the cluster. And what's interesting is with clients, those could be basically developed in any form of uh, programming language that you'd like to use. So we've got supported connectors for Java and Python and Ruby and Spring Boot. But there's also ways that we could have connectors interacting with the cluster where we could actually have source connectors and sync connectors. So a source connector would be, we would wanna connect up to something like a database or like a data producer and flow that data into Confluent Cloud. And a sync connector is what we're going to use today to actually sync the data that we've created uh, through that curated topic of accomplished female readers out to Cosmos DB. So let's add a new connector. And as you see here, we've got connectors for all different types of sources and sinks. These are supported by Confluent. And right here, we've got the Azure Cosmos DB sync connector, which we're going to use. 
It's a fully managed connector, meaning we just provided some metadata in order for it to be stood up and it will be provisioned into the cluster for us and it will be ready to start pushing data into Cosmos DB. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose the topic that we would like to source the data from to sync it to Cosmos DB. So we have the topic accomplished female readers. We're going to choose an input message type. So uh, these would be the format that the messages will be coming from the topic in. And we've got a schema registry based JSON uh, input message type. And for the Kafka cluster credentials for this connector, we're going to use a service account which I've already pre-provisioned and given the appropriate permissions to this cluster and the topics. And now we just need to provide a little bit more information, information we've gotten from Cosmos DB, specifically what's our endpoint that we'll be using. What's our connection key? And the great fact about the Cosmos connection keys is typically for databases, you'll be able to have a primary and a secondary key. So you could enforce key rotations at any point in time. Remember that if you've got an active connector, when you're rotating those keys, you can just come in here, replace the key, update the connector, and then rotate your keys in Cosmos as needed. So we're going to give it the database name inside of Cosmos, which is Reader Analytics. And then here we have what's known as a topic to container map. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to provide the topic name and map it to the container in Azure Cosmos DB that we want to deliver those messages to. So we will have the topic name of accomplished female readers. And we're going to be mapping it to the accomplished female readers container inside of Cosmos DB. So we need to choose an ID strategy so that we've got unique identifiers for all of the messages that are being sent over to Cosmos DB. Here, we're gonna choose a Kafka metadata strategy where we're going to use a combination of uh, the topic name, the partition, and the offset to uniquely identify each of those keys or each of those values and messages. And here we will choose the number of tasks that we want to run for this connector. So let's go ahead and provision this connector. And before provisions, we should get a view of the JSON output that we would use to provision this connector if we were doing it via the CLI which we'll do a demonstration of again in the near future. So let's go ahead and launch this. Uh, we know that we've got a cost estimate here of what it'll cost us to run this. So let's go ahead and run it and start sending some of that data over to Cosmos DB. So our connector has been sent in for provisioning. As we can see, we've got a provisioning status for this sync connector to Cosmos DB. And in a moment, we should have a Cosmos DB sync connector up and running, and we'll be able to start seeing the messages that are arriving into Cosmos DB. Okay, we've been notified that our sync connector is now up and running. So let's take a look at the connector. Now we've got messages that are already in that topic. So it's going to take a moment for the connector to catch up to those messages that have been out there already and start writing them into Cosmos DB. But once it does, we'll actually start seeing the messages being processed and synced via the connector. All right, so we've got messages flowing through the connector. Let's come over here to Cosmos DB and take a look inside of our reader analytics database at the accomplished female readers container. And here we have items 
that we can view and see if we're actually receiving messages in from Confluent Cloud, which we are. So we've got the IDs mapping to the ID inside of the container. And as we can see, we've got clickstream information being delivered, female looking at a certain page in a certain region. Again, different page, different region, different page. So the connector is working. And now we can notify the team that was asking to have this certain subset of data delivered to them in Cosmos DB from Confluent Cloud. I hope this demonstration was helpful and giving you an explanation of how we took source data, brought it into Confluent Cloud, created an enriched topic with KSQL DB, and then provided a sync for that topic out to Azure Cosmos DB. All right. So that was pretty cool. We connected up a couple of existing data sources to uh, Confluent Cloud. We enriched that data. We got the page view data that that analytics team was looking for, and we delivered it to them in Cosmos DB, where now they can do even more data analytics against that, that data set and maybe even expand it further. So I'd like to ask you to go ahead and try Confluent Cloud. In fact, we've got a fantastic offer right now. If you go to confluent.io slash confluent dash cloud, you can get two months of free, basically $400 worth of credits for you to start building and learning about Confluent Cloud. Not only that, but you can also uh, visit developer.confluent.io to learn more about Apache Kafka and what it's like to build and manage uh, streaming applications and work with data in motion and event-based architectures. So thank you very much for coming today. Pavan, it was a pleasure working with you as well. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.